Hi, this is Cheryl Graham. I'm going to show you two ways to make a simple Flash animation directly from Illustrator. No knowledge of Flash is required. Here's what we're going for. I've got this open in a browser window, and this is my zombie that's just uh, got a throbbing, pulsating glow around it, and it's looping in, as an animation. So, let's go back to Illustrator. Here's the zombie shape. It's a closed path. It's got a fill of black and a stroke of none. And by the way, if you're a Toots Plus member, you can download this file to follow along. So what I'm going to do is add a series of strokes that are going to act as that pulsating glow. And I'm going to do that with the appearance panel. So I'm just going to check that flyout menu and choose add new stroke. And there's my stroke. It's black. It's one point weight. So I can do this in CS4 a lot easier than in previous versions, but you can still do it with previous versions. But here in CS4, if I could just click the stroke, it brings up the stroke panel. I'm going to make a few modifications to that. I'm going to leave it at one point, but I'm going to change the join to a round join, and I'm going to align the stroke to the outside of the object rather than center it, which is the default. I'm also going to change the color, and again, in CS4, I can just choose that color swatch and go to um, another color there. And I'm going to leave the stroke weight at 1. So you can see here that there's our stroke. It's got a dark turquoise color and a one-point weight, and it's on the outside. It's hard to see it from here, but let me zoom in. So there's our object with the dark turquoise swatch on it, or stroke, I should say. So I could do that again several times by, again, clicking on Add New Stroke, but since I've gone to the trouble of setting that up, all I need to do to save some time is to duplicate it. I'll just drag that down to the Duplicate Item menu here, or icon, I should say, and that'll make a copy of it. So here's my copy. I can change the color, and I've got a color group set up already, which is saving me some more time, so I'll choose that lighter turquoise color, I'll change the weight to two points. That way it'll show up on the outside of the original one. And now what I do is just do that several more times, dragging it to the duplicate item icon, choosing the one on the bottom, going to the next lightest color in my group, and I'll make that, let's say, four points this time. So that's that glow is getting a little bigger. Another time, drag it, select the one on the bottom, go to the next lightest color, Let's make that six, and I'll just do this a few more times. Select the one on the bottom, change the color, change the stroke weight. Two or three more times here, and we'll be done. Uh, lighter blue color, we'll make that ten. Go one more time there. I've got one very light turquoise color. Let's just make that fourteen for the heck of it. And one last time, I'm going to add a stroke of white. So I have to duplicate that choose the one on the bottom, go to white, and I'll make that 18. And we're done. So that has all of the strokes on the object, and you can see that it's still just one object. Even if I show it in outline mode, there's my um, zombie. So all of these strokes are appearance attributes, and they show up that way. So what we need to do to animate it is expand that appearance so all of those strokes are individual objects. So we'll go to Object, Expand Appearance, and there you can see we have individual strokes that are all their, their own. So if you see that in Outline Mode, there again. Those are all the strokes that we created in the Appearance panel, but now they're expanded to their, their own shapes. Go back to Preview Mode. One thing I have to do before animating this is ungroup those, because right now it's all one group, so I want to disassociate all of those strokes. So I'll just simply go to Object, Ungroup. So now I can select individual ones, so that's how you know that they're grouped. Ungrouped, I should say. So the final thing that we're going to do for animation is to go to the Layers panel, go to the Flyout menu, and choose Release to Layers Sequence. What that will do, as you can see, is put each of those shapes on its own layer, and they're numbered sequentially, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., and they all have different colors. So that's how you can tell that they're all on their own layer. So that's what we need to do to make individual animation frames, and that's what we'll do when we export our file. So just go to File, Export, 
choose Flash as the format. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop. I'll click Export. And this rather uh, large options dialog comes up here. The main thing to remember here is to export export this as AI layers to SWF frames um, because that way it'll get moving. Uh, everything else can stay the same. I've chosen the highest curve quality to make a good quality animation and the background color I can change to any color I want using this familiar color picker but I'm going to leave it as black because it's black, the zombie himself, and then the glow will just uh, will just show up. Next thing I want to do is click the advanced button which will bring up another set of options and here I just want to choose looping so that plays over and over again and the layer order doesn't really matter since it's looping it can go from the top down or the bottom up um, it'll just loop over and over again click OK now I'll go to a browser there's the one I did previously but here's a blank tab in my uh, Firefox browser and I can just drag that file, that's that flash file that I just exported, onto a blank window and it will animate like so. So the second way to make a flash animation is by using blends. And again, if you're a Toots Plus member, you can download these files to follow along. I'll show you what we're going for here. This is a morph type of blend where each shape sort of blends or morphs into one another, one another and it just loops as an animation. Okay, we'll go back to Illustrator. I have my four shapes that represent the four seasons, and I just first want to align them so that they're sitting on top of one another. I can do that with the Align panel or the Control panel up here. I'll just uh, horizontal align them and vertically, uh, vertically align them so that they're all together. Let me enlarge that so you can see it better. And I just want to make a blend of all four objects. So first I'll go to the Blend tool and double click on it which will bring up the blend options. And here I've chosen specified steps because we do want to end up with individual objects and frames for our animation. So it says specified steps, that's hard to say. The spacing is specified steps. And I've chosen eight steps because I want a nice smooth blend but I don't want too many shapes at the end. So I'll click OK. And then I just simply go up to Object, Blend, Make. So there's our blended seasons right there. And now I can, I can export this as a flash file and have Illustrator animate it. So I'll go to File, Export. Let's say Seasons Morph as my title. I'll choose Flash as the format, of course, and choose Export. Now that will bring up this large dialog box again. And what I want to do here is go to the basic panel first and export this as layers to frames like we did before. Everything here can stay the same. I'm going to leave, choose, uh, leave the background color as white um, because I just want that to show up nice and white on my animation. So that's white. I'll click on advanced and this time I want it to loop like I did before but I'll have Illustrator do the animation and the separating the blend objects out. So I'll click Animate Blends in Sequence. Since we did with the zombie, we, we released the layers to Sequence. I'll choose to animate the blend in a sequence as well. And what this does, like I said, is it just has Illustrator do the animating and we don't have to release the blend to all of those separate objects. I'll click OK, go back to my browser and I've got the SWF file that I just exported. Once again, I'll drag it onto a blank browser window and there's our animation. So now that you understand how Illustrator uses the objects in a file to create animations in Flash, you can experiment with your own. This is of course the one that we did with the blends and this is the one that we did with the appearance panel and the lines. Here's one using type as a blend. You can even use 3D objects and blend those. And since you understand how the Layers panel is involved in creating the animations and the order in which the animation will play, you can do something like this with animated type. So, thanks for watching.